Hello and welcome to another Big Finish review. Today we're wrapping up the first wave of Ninth Doctor Adventures with the fourth box set, Old Friends. Well, Christopher Eccleston has definitely confirmed that he has absolutely no intentions of returning to the TV series. We will be seeing more adventures with the Ninth Doctor in Series 2, which will be starting later this year. So hopefully, if you're interested, be sure to check those reviews out when they eventually arrive here. Before we get into the review for this particular box set, however, I would just like to ask if you haven't already, I would greatly appreciate it if you would support the channel by hitting subscribe. Turn on notifications so you can stay up to date, like and comment, and you can find and follow me on Twitter here. Just a quick heads up to say I will be talking some spoilers for this release. Not too major, but I think some of them have to be addressed. We begin, old friends, with Fond Farewell by David K. Barnes. The Doctor arrives at an intergalactic funeral parlour where the deceased are allowed the opportunity to attend their own wake. How did you know my husband? I was with him on his last expedition. You were? <laughs> he was a character, to say the least. I'm sure everyone here would give anything to see him again. Well, that's just as well, isn't it, considering? What do you mean? This is fond farewell. It's why we're here, surely you know. Sorry, I'm not with you. <gasps> What's happening? <gasps> it's worked. Oh, my heaven. Oh, it's really worked. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> wow. So many of you here. Now, don't tell me I owe money to all of you. <laughs> Flynn! Oh, hey, love, it's all right. It's all right. It's me. It really is. But it's not possible. Thanks, everyone. On behalf of my wife and I, there is nothing else to say but welcome to my funeral. The story tackles a similar concept to the holograms in Red Dwarf, giving people an opportunity to say goodbye to their loved ones even after they're dead. It's an interesting and uh, kind of morbid sci-fi idea. Explain the USP. Our premium service allows for the most personal farewell between the deceased and their loved ones that science can presently provide. For a few hours, we can restore their mind and body to the very peak of health. But what for? So the dead can return and attend their own funerals. So they're not the same bodies? No. The real body's in the coffin. What we're seeing over there is some kind of synthetic. Like the staff, but better. Totally lifelike. They look, sound, smell, even feel like the original. What about their memories? Yep, every one of them. Even unlocks the ones you forgot. It can be a real blessing for families, after what they've coped with. So Flynn's consciousness, or a copy of it, is in that body, good as new. What's to stop him getting out? Run away. Live forever. The age-old dream. The process has a very short lifespan, I think. I'm sure it's all in the T's and C's. The main focus of the story is the fact that the deceased doesn't seem to remember the Doctor or another member of the funeral guests. So the Doctor decides to investigate to see why those memories have been removed from him. While it's a standalone story not connected to the last two, it does set up the theme of this box set, that being how to process grief, as the story tackles the idea of how some people will wish to remember the more positive aspects of someone once they're gone and kind of forget about their negative traits. And the story questions whether or not that's a good thing, as that means that the person that they are seeing is not truly who they were. Fond Farewell mixes up a lot of different concepts from Doctor Who that really, on the sound of it, shouldn't go together, but they end up working really well. We've got stuff like a sort of Indiana Jones style adventure, we've got chirpy, upbeat servant robots that of course go around killing people, and the overarching theme of grief. They managed to blend all these ideas together really well. 
the final two stories in this box set, Way of the Berryman and The Fourth Generation, both written by Roy Gill, act as a two-parter and the finale of this first particular series. So it's all one story. The finale sees the Doctor reunite with the character of the Brigadier, played here by John Coleshaw, who's taken up the role since Nicholas Courtney's passing. And I gotta say, while it's not a perfect impersonation, I do think he slips into the role really well. Um, who are you, sir? The Doctor. The Doctor? Well, now I know I'm seeing things. You can't possibly be. Well, there's charming. How not? Well, for a start, um, what happened to your hair? It's practical. Anyway, like you can talk, Silver Fox. I say. Strong look, though. Sarah Jane always knew you'd go distinguished. Or was that Harry? Sarah Jane. And Harry. <sighs> Lieutenant Sullivan. <sighs> my, my, my. It really is you, isn't it, Doctor? Regenerated. And again. Quick as ninepence, me. A doctor with a buzz cut. Well, I never. We'll make a soldier out of you yet. And he and Eccleston managed to have that good Doctor Brigadier chemistry that a lot of the other actors had. This two-parter offers a sort of different type of relationship between the Doctor and the Brigadier, and while it's hinted towards, I appreciate that they don't reference the Time War. So this is Inchgarvey. Bridge looks massive this close. That's because it is massive. I'm just saying, all that pressure on one little island. No, it feels... Weight of the universe on your shoulders again, Doctor? Sometimes. But never with an old friend. Anything I can do. I must say, I'm not used to seeing you travel by yourself. New Doctor, new rules. I like it like this. Forgive me, but, um... Did something happen? Nothing I need to talk about. This story continues with the theme of exploring Scottish mythology and the idea of ghosts as initially the story sees the Brigadier investigating hauntings around the bridge over the River Forth. Also joining the Doctor and the Brigadier in these two stories is the character of Sam Bishop, played by Warren Brown. Now despite the artwork using his likeness from Praxius, Warren Brown is a completely different character. From Big Finish's long-running modern series unit spin-off. Now this might put newcomers off who haven't listened to those audios yet. I myself haven't listened to that particular range. However, this is probably the best starting point when it comes to this character as this is technically his origin story and is the earliest point we've seen this character from before he joined unit. So no context is required here, thankfully. Along with Sam, we also meet his girlfriend, Fiona, who is the sort of local expert when it comes to sort of Scottish myths and legends, and provides a lot of the backstory and exposition for the mysterious ongoing events. Back all day, Sam. Still no coffee. Complete mission failure. What am I going to do with you? Who's your friend? I'm the Doctor, and to jump in before the next question, just the Doctor, all right? OK, just the Doctor. Would you like to help our historical society? Go on, it's a good cause. No money, but I love a bit of history. Tell me about your society. We're very active, researching the ruins over on the islands, the big estates, social history of the bridges, ancient traditions. Tell him about the Burryman. He needs educated. But now we come to the main aspect of the story. That being the return of the Cybermen, which up until just before this story's release was kept a secret, which I appreciate, but the fact that they revealed it just beforehand did kind of impact my viewing of the story. It's still very enjoyable and I really like it, but I think I would have appreciated it more if I didn't know the Cybermen were going to be in it, and the fact that they're all over the covers kind of disrupted my enjoyment because for most of Way of the Berryman I was just wondering how the Cybermen involved in this story. 
On re-listens, this isn't going to be a huge issue, as I now have the context of what the Cybermen are doing, and it is an interesting concept, the idea of a older, more decayed Cybermen with specific views on how their race should be, conflicting with newer, more primitive Cybermen who don't really know what they're supposed to be doing and questioning the supposed logical ways of their essentially father, I suppose. The sleepers are awakening more Cybermen. What must we know? We must control the humans. Why? Ha! Fantastic. Because humans are inferior. Why? Music to my ears. Do you know, I reckon why might be my favourite word. Good choice. I tell my class, every story starts with a why. So do revolutions. Humans are inferior because they are weak. The inferior must be controlled. If control is not possible, they must be eliminated. The useful parts and knowledge may be salvaged. This is the only way to ensure survival. I understand. Oh, dangerous game you're playing, Creel. What happens when they work out that same logic applies to you? Explain. Look at you lot. All shiny and new, made in Scotland from genius and steel ganders. Look at Creel. All bandages and decay. He's on his last legs. I just think they should have at least kept it hidden for those who listened to it initially. Like they definitely didn't need to be on the main cover or of the cover for Weird the Berryman because they, they only show up right at the end of part one. And so having them at centre stage kind of takes away from the rest of the otherwise fairly interesting story with the whole ghosts and again dealing with the idea of grief and whether the supposed ghosts should be put to rest or should be allowed to continue haunting the island as it were. While they are causing trouble for some people, it isn't their fault. It is an interesting idea and I definitely think I'll be able to enjoy it a lot more when I listen to it a second time.